I, I realized I didn't record the previous section. <laughs> That's quite unfortunate. Okay, so maybe let me just quickly do a recap, okay, for the sake of those who will be watching the video. All right, so in the previous, uh, in the previous session, which unfortunately we couldn't, I forgot to record, I, I showed how to uh, run Python modules. Okay, so to run a Python module, a module is a collection of codes, something called uh, like a library, okay, that you can import. So these are codes that people, other people have written and you get to import or include those codes in your own application, okay, or use them for something else. So uh, if you want to run a piece of script and it's a module, right? The way you do that is by calling the Python interpreter followed by the flag minus M. Okay, so minus M tells Python that whatever you are about to find is a module. So we are going to test this on something called VENV, virtual environment. Virtual environment is a way we are able to sandbox uh, the Python interpreter for our application, right? So. Uh, you could have various versions of the Python interpreter installed on your PC, for instance. Right now, I have two different versions of Python. I have Python 3.8 and then Python 3.10 on my PC, right? And if I do Python minus V, see that the active one is Python 3.10. Is that okay? Now, chances are that I may forget and upgrade or update this Python one day and then... Uh, Usually from one version to another, there are changes, right? So let's say uh, there is something in Python 8, 3.8 that uh, my code depends on, and that uh, this change, the, this thing or dependency was removed in Python version 3.10, then that means that my code is going to break down. Is that okay? So to avoid that, uh, virtual environment help us keep a copy of whatever Python version bundled with our application is that okay so to do that we have to run the uh, uh, command python minus m followed by now the module that we want to run is called virtual env shortened as venv then you can provide any name that you want so i can call it eric right but i usually prefer to call it venv like that, right? So if I hit enter, it is going to install, but I'm not going to do that because I did that in the previous session. Unfortunately, we couldn't record it. Okay, so if you hit enter, it is going to record. If I hit, sorry, if I hit enter, it's going to create a folder, copy, the, make a copy of your Python uh, interpreter in that folder. So I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so I have already done that. So let's look at it. So if we look in here, you see that now we have a folder called VENV, right? Let's enter into that folder. So CVENV. Now in here, you see, if, if you have looked at the Python uh, interpreter folder before, installation folder before, you see something like this, include, lib, script, and what's that, right? Good. Now. When we create a virtual environment, it doesn't automatically uh, uh, set up. We have to actually activate it. It doesn't automatically get activated. We have to activate it, okay? Now, before we activate, look here. Is it that all that we have here is what the, so I have for on my app, C colon users, professor, desktop learner skill, right? We are still using the globally installed Python interpreter. Is that okay? To activate this, and if you are on Windows environment, to activate this, you see, you enter into the folder that you installed. Now, take note here, you don't use CD. You just go straight to it, okay? So you enter into the folder that you installed. Inside that folder, there is another folder called scripts. So let me show you. So if I do uh, lsvmv, you see that there is a folder called scripts in here, right? Now, in that folder called scripts, so if I do lsvmv scripts, script, okay, you see that we have activates. There is this 
uh, program called activate.bat. Now, activate.bat is what we, we need on Windows and on Linux or Mac, activate, dot, activate without the dot .bat is what is used. Okay, so we want to run this program. Is that okay? So I'm going to show you how you can run this program from your Linux code folder. So to do that, here you don't start with CD. We don't want to change the folder first, right? So we just call the folder name directly. Then use backslash. Backslash tells the command line to enter into the next, uh, uh, into another folder. So it's just like open another folder, right? And we want to enter into the script folder. And inside the script folder, so we use the, another backslash to enter to mean that we are entering into that folder. There is a file called activate.bat. Okay, so once I hit enter, this activates the virtual environment. And now you can see that we have this VENV in parentheses before the prompt, okay? So anytime you activate your virtual environment, the name of the virtual environment will be put here like that. Is that okay? So it means that right now, right now, if if I do anything, I am uh, if I do any, if I make any changes to my Python, my Python interpreter, it is affecting only the virtual environment, not the globally installed Python. Is that okay? So let's see if I do which Python, sorry, uh, you may not get the which command on your PC. I have installed other tools. So if I do which Python, you see it is that I'm using Python, which is on users professor desktop learn a skill VENV script Python. Is that okay? Now, you can always deactivate your virtual environment. All you have to do is to type deactivate. That's all. And once it gets deactivated, the virtual environment name is taken off, right? Now, if I do which Python, you see that the global Python is installed at C, program files, Python 310, Python. Okay, so I hope this is clearer to you and you understand what I'm trying to illustrate. So let's quickly go ahead and try to activate our virtual environment. So you can do it with me. To activate it, just call the name of your virtual environment, the folder, and inside that folder, enter into the script folder. Inside the script folder, there is a file called activate. Just call it and hit enter. Once you activate, your virtual environment is activated, you should see its name before the prompt line yeah so try it and tell me whether you are successful or not uh, i am successful all right that, that's cool even how are you okay i'm on it sir I'm, I'm... come again i said i'm on it too, sir. I'll, i'm typing a script i'll finish version you are not supposed to type a script to, you are supposed to enter it directly on the command line, like I've done here. Yes. Okay. Oh, no. See, the system cannot find the path specified. Please check it well. Whatever you yeah, type. I mean, is, okay. The script has a capital S at the beginning. Okay, no. And the backslash, not forward slash. All of them are in, are in the lower case. No, you should type, look at mine. It's VMV. Okay. The script starts with capital S, not small s. Okay, okay sir. Yeah. Please, are you finished? Yes, I have. I have. Is it working now? Yes, sir, it is. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. So anytime, anytime you want to start the project and you you previously activated a virtual environment, the first thing you do 
is to activate the virtual environment okay before you start to work else every if you make any installations that installation would affect the global python not your virtual environment please do you understand okay. hello yes. can you hear me yes sir okay yes, fantastic hear. so to deactivate it like i said just type deactivate that's all and hit enter sorry i made a spelling mistake deactivate right and the moment you deactivate you should see this thing taking off that means now if you use the python you are using the global python version not the virtual one this is it okay hello guys can you hear me Hello. Please, can you hear me? Okay. All right. Fantastic. Hi. So let us yes, activate sir. it okay. one more time. So VNV scripts and then uh, activate. Okay. So always. Okay, so uh, that is how. So, uh, have you have you activated your virtual environment? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay, so keep all these commands that we keep learning. We are building the basis. Okay, so make sure you don't forget them. Is that okay? We are building okay, the sir. basis. Yes, though we, because you guys are now learning, I have to take it slowly. You get a point, but. Make sure everything that we do, you don't what, forget it. Is that okay? All right. Now, there is also another flag that you need to know, which is the minus I. You see, when I run with minus C, right? Um, if I run a script like Python world.py and it runs, you see, it's still in my command prompt. It doesn't enter the Python mode, right? But if you want to run the script and also the moment it's done running the script it should enter into the command prompt mode then you can put minus i the minus i stands for interactive is that okay so if i do python minus i and call the world.py the moment it runs the program it also enters the, the interactive mode or it opens the python console so that i can enter commands directly Please, I hope you see the difference, right? Yes, sir. Fantastic. So let's let's give that a try. Uh, use Python minus i to run the, the script that you created and tell me what you see. Okay, sir. You're done. Yes, I'm done. I'm also done. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I would skip on this particular one, talk about it later. Okay. So let's go to our command prompt. Let's go to our command prompt. Um, where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Good. So now exit the Python interpreter, exit the Python interpreter. Do you remember the code? Yes. Do you remember the command for exiting the interpreter? Exit double parenthesis. Exactly. Okay. exactly. All right, so if you exit now, enter the Python interpreter again. So you've learned how to exit the interpreter. So remember that all the time. So let's enter the Python interpreter again. Now, anytime you enter into the Python interpreter, there are certain things that you would see. I'm going to explain them to you, okay? So this three dot, uh, three greater than sign, is actually customizable. You can change it. I think on the Linux environment, you can actually change how it appears, okay? This, uh, oh, is it? No, no, that would be the command prompt. This 
three uh, greater than signs. We call it the primary prompt. Okay, we call it what? The primary prompt. Then there is also an instance where you see three dots, like ellipses. You know, ellipses, three dots. When do we use three dots in, in English language? When do we use three dots? Yes. Have you ever seen three dots being used before? Uh huh. Please answer me. Have you ever seen yeah. three dots being used in English before? Maybe you. Maybe I've seen that forgotten. Whoa. We say the how are you? Just family, family, but I can't remember. Anytime you are typing something and you want to show that oh, there is a continuation, right? You are not done. You use three dots. Okay. So for okay, instance, okay. if I put three dots on this, it means that there is some something continues. This is not the end. We call it ellipsis. Okay. Okay, good. So Python employs the same concept. There are times where the command that you want to run will transcend or sorry, will traverse more than one line. For instance, for instance, if I want to print the numbers one up to 10, which I'm going to do something you shouldn't worry about. So I can do something like four, or let me say I want to print the characters in a, in a sentence, right? I can say for C in Yakubu, right? I can do this, C in Yakubu, right? Now, technically I'm not done with my command. Is that okay? So if I hit enter, now you see that instead of the double, uh, the triple greater than sign, we are now seeing the triple what dots, right? Called ellipses. So this is what we call a secondary prompt. So primary prompt, secondary prompt. Secondary prompt tells you that something else needs to come to make the code complete. Is that okay? Something else what has to come to make the code complete. Okay. So here. If I want to make it complete, then I can do something like print, uh, print C, okay? So this code, now if I hit enter and enter again, you see that it prints out the characters in the name Yakubu. Is that okay? Fantastic. I think we can actually even do the same thing with the print. So if I want to do print and then I start this and say maybe, yeah, right? and I hit enter, okay, this one is not allowed. Okay, so just take note, just take note of this. When you see this three, four greater than sign, right? It is called what? The primary prompt and the triple, uh, the ellipsis is called secondary prompt. The secondary prompt always tells you that something else is necessary. The code or the command you are inputting is not what complete. Please, is it okay? Yes, sir. All right. So take note of that. Very, very important. Very, very well important. Okay. So let's continue. Okay. So I think I've talked about this. All right. Now this interpreter here, you can actually use it to, you can, you can use it as a, a simple calculator. Okay. For instance, I can add five to four and it gives me an answer. I can multiply nine by seven, okay? I can raise two to the power two, that's two square. I can find eight to the power four, two, eight squared, that's 64. I can even do complex numbers. I can do, comp if you know complex numbers, right? So the imaginary part and the, the real part and imaginary part. So if I say two, three, okay, it creates a complex number two, three, I, right? So I can do complex two, th four, plus complex uh, three, uh, complex four, zero. Or oh, let me just try four. And you see, it adds that. See, when you're adding complex numbers, you add the real part and the imaginary mm -hmm. part. So this two plus four, which gives us six, and four plus zero, which gives us what? 
4G. Okay, so you can use this thing to do a lot. You can, in fact, you can do very wild calculations like two divided by five divided by four times six, yeah, whatever you want. Okay, and you can use it. So if you don't have a calculator, just feel free. You can always do this. In fact, SQRT four. Okay. Uh oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'll have to import math, I think. Oops. Wait. Now, sometimes this programming languages confuse me. So math that SQRC. Really? Aha, uh -huh, okay. So this is how you find square roots, okay? Yeah, so you can do all this stuff. So a lot of things. And as we go on, or as we move forward, we will, we will be using these things a lot, okay? So you can always use get into the interpreter mode and use the interpreter as your uh, as a simple calculator. Now, there is something interesting that you can do with the Python interpreter. If I pass as a, a, a word or a letter, okay? And I do multiply this by 10. This is called repetition. Okay, it will just uh, multiply that thing. It will just repeat that thing 10 times. Okay, fantastic. All right. If I have a text, okay, let's say the quick brown for example, over the lazy dog. I want to find how many characters are there in that. I can just do len and pass it the quick brown box jumped over the lazy dogs, right? And if I hit enter, it tells me that there are 45 characters. That includes the spaces, okay? So if you know what you are doing, you can do a lot in the interpreter mode, okay? Now we have just a few minutes to end this session. Let's continue, okay? Now, I, what I want, the next session that we are, I think um, let's postpone that to tomorrow so that you get the chance to uh, practice everything that we've done so far. Is that okay? Try and go over it. I'm going to make the videos available right now after immediately we end this session. Two minutes according to my time. So I don't want to introduce a new topic. Is that okay? So if you have any questions, this is the time we can look at that question and uh, hopefully I can help you understand things better. That go well in tomorrow, we're going to continue with data types and operations. And that's where we get to know how to do basic arithmetic operations in Python. And yeah, so every day we will build something, we will do something new. Our teach lessons are going to be incremental. So always make sure you have not forgotten what you did previously, okay? Else you always be lagging behind. All right, so any questions up to this point? Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to upload the videos, please. Try and go over again those command prompt things that we did, try to understand them, and then uh, all that. Try to understand them, go over. If you come across any challenge, just you can put it on the page, on, on the WhatsApp page. I'll try to answer you if I see it, or you can ask your questions the following day, okay? But make sure you watch the video again and try to practice the things that we have done. You see, this is the time for you to do that. If you wait till things become very, uh, if you wait for things to pile up, then your foundation will be weaker. And as we move ahead, you will be found wanting and you will not understand the rest. Is that okay? So please try as much as possible, go over the things and repeat them. Is that okay? Okay. All right, please, any questions? Any questions? No questions from my side. Any questions? Yes. Okay, sir. Yeah. All right, so whilst you were teaching us, I observed something concerning the, the test that you type in. I think mm -hmm. that some of the tests, at least, they are case sensitive, meaning the uppercase or the lowercase. 
exactly you them anyhow. exactly when you are typing these things it should be especially when you are entering the names of folders and files they are case a case sensitive so you cannot just enter anything like that All right. Uh, yeah, Fuseni, any questions? So far, no question. All right. So please, you guys should try and go over, okay? So that um, uh, we can progress uh, quicker tomorrow. All right. So see you, but I will still.